Hi and welcome to this tutorial. This is the first of a series of tutorials where I talk about Spring data support. We have already covered some of the core aspects of Spring as well as Spring AOP. If you have not gone through those tutorials, I highly recommend that you go through them and then come to this one. While not all of the things that we have discussed earlier will be applicable, knowledge of those concepts is very helpful when you try to understand the data support that Spring provides. So in the core Spring section, we talked about some of the core features that is provided by the Spring framework, the main thing being dependency injection and uh, dependency mapping in XML and configuration format. In Spring AOP, we talked about how we can introduce aspects into our program and we can have cross-cutting functionalities isolated out into separate classes and then apply them again as configuration rather than in the actual code. When we talk about Spring data support, the way Spring helps us in coding is kind of slightly different from what we've been seeing so far. Because if you look at core Spring and aspect-oriented support, uh, it's kind of open-ended. You can use it for anything you want. It could be for data, it could be for something totally different. But when you talk about Spring data support, it's specifically for the purpose of your application interacting with data or a database. And when you typically write Java code that talks to a database, there are a few things that you will have to do uh, irrespective of what business uh, logic you're writing. You need to open connections, you need to close connections, you need to manage transactions, you need to write some boilerplate code. And uh, the whole point of using Spring Data Support is that you can do away with all those extra code and the code that you write is specifically for the business case and the business problem that you're trying to solve. Now, when you talk about writing code to interact with the database uh, in Java, there are numerous ways we can do that. Uh, it could be as simple as JDBC, or it could be some kind of an ORM uh, framework like Hibernate or Ibatus. And uh, of course, we have a whole lot of uh, technologies that we can use. Now, Spring supports a lot of these technologies. Spring has a JDBC module that provides a kind of an abstraction layer and uh, all the tedious JDBC coding that we would do is kind of taken away if you use the JDBC module that Spring provides. And uh, Spring also provides an ORM module that of course does the same thing but for uh, different ORM frameworks it supports JPA, Hibernate, IBATS and uh, again it has an integration layer that we can use and uh, that layer and the Spring support will take care of all the boilerplate code that we would have to write, even in the case of an advanced data layer uh, framework like Hibernate. So as we go on, as we you know look at the various ways in which Spring helps us, I hope the concepts will get more and more clearer. But for this tutorial, what I would like to do is I'd like to set up some kind of a database running on your development environment so that you can follow along these tutorials. Uh, the database that I have in mind is Apache Derby. It's a very lightweight in-memory database and uh, it's, it's something that's very easy to set up and it takes less resources. It's perfect for uh, testing out new concepts and trying out things that we're doing right now. So. Um, Let's get started. So the first thing we do is head over to the Apache Derby website and download it. I have my browser open here. The website is db.apache.org slash derby. So I head over to the download tab and uh, here you can download the official latest release. I happen to have a download available here already. I'll just open that. Once you download and extract the zip file, you should get a folder like this. Uh, the more important folders that we will be working with are the bin and the lib folders. The bin contains the program which lets us start and stop the databases and um, the lib contains the jars that we'll have to include in our program when we connect to the database. Now after downloading and extracting the distribution, the next step is to set the environment variables. So. Apache Derby recommends a couple of environment variables that needs to be set. The first thing being Derby Home. Derby Home needs to be set to the location where we have extracted our distribution. So here, this is a location that we need to set up, including the name of the folder which we have extracted. So this folder will contain the bin and the lib folders. Okay, so that's the first environment variable. Derby home. 
And uh, the second variable that we need to set is the path. We need to set whome slash bin to the path variable. And the reason we do that is that all the, you know, the commands that we run are in the bin folder. We'll look at these commands in a minute, but it, you know, setting this, this folder in the path allows us to run those commands irrespective of where we are in the command prompt. So that makes it easy to run these commands without having to type the entire path. And a quick note on how to set those command variables if you're on uh, Windows. Uh, I have a web page open here, which kind of gives all the details. So all you need to do is uh, right click on my computer, go to system properties, and then in the system properties, there will be an environment variables button. Click on that and you will get the environment variables both for the user as well as for the system. So you hit new and it asks for the name and the value. So here you say Derby home, all caps, and here is the value where you have extracted the folder. And uh, for the path, there must be a path variable already available. So all you need to do is click on that and click edit, and then you can add the Derby home slash bin to the path, of course, separating the previous one with a semicolon, and then hit OK so that both these changes get reflected in the environment variable. So after having set the two environment variables, we have completed all the steps required to install Apache Derby. So those were the only two steps. First is to download and extract the distribution. The second step was to add the environment variables Derby home, as well as Derby home slash bin added to the path. Now we open a command prompt and head over to the location where we have the Apache Derby. So I navigate to where I have extracted it. And I have this location over here. So I go to the bin directory. And in the bin directory, you have a lot of batch files and script files. If you're on Windows, you would be running the batch files. And if you're on Unix or Mac, you would be running the script files. Derby operates in two modes. One is the server mode and one is the embedded mode. So we are going to look at the server mode or the network server mode and we'll be using that in our example. So we need to start Derby as a network server. Well, what does a network server mean? It is similar to all the other databases that we have come across. You have a database on one machine and then other machines across the network can connect to that. Embedded mode is something specific to Derby and we'll have a look at that down the line, but for now we'll stick to the network server mode. So in order to start Derby as a network server, we need to use the start network server script. Or if you're on Windows, you need to run the start network server dot bat batch file. So I will do that. Start network server. And there you go. Derby is running and it's accepting connections on this port, 1.5. To seven. Now we can actually test this by using a client to connect to the server. Derby actually comes with a client called ij, also ij.bat for Windows users. We can use ij to connect to the server and actually run queries. So let's do that. I have a second command line prompt over here, which is in the same bin directory, but this time I'm going to use the ij tool to run the client. Okay, so I have this IJ running. Now I can ask IJ to connect to this server so that I can execute some commands. So let me paste a command that I already have here. So the command is connect and then the query string. And uh, look at the query string here. I'm using JDBC colon Derby and uh, localhost colon 1527. So this is the, you know, the database running on the same machine. So the IP will be can be replaced by localhost and the port is 1527 which you've already seen and uh, I'm creating a new database called db because I've given a database name and I've affixed it with create equals true so it, it's, it's going to try to connect to the database db running on this server if it finds it yes it does connect directly but if it does not find it it actually creates the database and uh, note that I'm ending the command with a semicolon in IJ, you need to end all your SQL commands with a semicolon. So this is the command. 
to connect to the server and create a database if it's not already there. Since this is something that I've just installed, this DB will not be there and it'll get created. Just press enter, so it has created the database and connected to it. So now here I can run any SQL queries that I want. So I will run a simple create table query and uh, you know we'll use the same uh, circle object that we had saved earlier. We'll try to create a circle table in correspondence with that circle object. So I have a create table query for a circle. So it creates table called circle. It has two columns, ID, integer, and name, which is a 50 uh, character long field. And uh, I end this with a semicolon and hit enter. So it says zero rows, inserted, updated, deleted, but it has actually created the table. So if I do a select star from circle, it's gonna give me this table definition, ID and name, and there are zero records. And uh, of course I can insert values here, I can say insert into circle first circle. Of course, I end it with a semicolon always. One row has been inserted. So if I select again, that record should get displayed and yes it does. So this is a quick primer in setting up and uh, you know running Apache Derby on your development environment and uh, this is all it takes. Now we have a fully full-fledged database running, we have a network server running and then you can also use this IJ client to connect to that if required and when you're done just say exit semicolon and it comes out of the client. So Having done this, we're all set to look at some of the core JDBC code that you would have to write and how Spring helps us in the subsequent tutorials.